It's so good to see all of you, and welcome to all of you out there in computer land. It's so wonderful to be here again. Um, it's been a rough year, and the battle, the uh, theme for this uh, conference is the battle is the Lord's. And I was thinking to myself when I first read it, what battle? And it's whatever battle that you're going through today, the battle belongs to the Lord. And I decided, uh, just in thinking about it, there were two uh, things I wanted to share about uh, the battle is the Lord. Number one, I wanted to uh, address a battle that our churches, that our church is going through and dealing with all the time. That is the onslaught of families and uh, the onslaught of our children. The enemy does not, does not want families to um, be together, and he does not want the children to learn about God. And the other thing is, I chose one thing from the prayers of David, King David, that I think uh, has, there's so many of his prayers that have helped me with me and my family, but there's one I chose that I think will help everyone today. Um, but first, um, I want to uh, mention the, uh, about the church's uh, um, battle with, uh, against the enemy. Uh, St. Paul tells us that our enemy is not flesh and blood, but it's principalities and powers uh, of dark, darkness, of those who rule in darkness. And uh, so if you go through these doors right here, and walk straight across the hall, and you enter the next room, you would walk into my fifth grade CCF class of 10-year-olds. And this is my sixth year of being, of being with 10-year-olds. It's a wonderful, wonderful class. And um, when we were getting together what to do for this year, we were asked that no matter what we teach, no matter what our class assignments were, they wanted us to uh, promote and teach the children how to have their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That if we accomplished anything through the year, we, they, that's what they wanted us to do. And I love that assignment because I had never been assigned that before at any, you know, during any CCF class. So the, what I decided to do was um, after prayer, our, our opening prayer, I ask the students um, how Jesus has worked in their life that week. Now, right in the beginning, they would say, huh? But, you know, when they say, huh, that gives you, that means you tell, explain to them what you want. And I said, how did you see Jesus working in your life? And at first, they couldn't answer anything. But um, after letting them know that, you know, I told them I saw Jesus in the sunset, you know, how the beautiful gift of the sunset, or I saw some flowers or whatever, and they began to get the hang of it. Well, um, this past Thanksgiving, when we got back from vacation, I was talking, we just started our regular class, and I said to the children, um, Okay, so how did you experience God? Uh, how, was, how was Jesus in your life while we were on vacation? And um, there were about eight of us in the room, and one little girl uh, raised her hand, and she said, Miss Jean, I saw a flower, this beautiful, beautiful flower, and I thought, oh, I love flowers. You know, I try to encourage them as they're going along. And she said, so I said, thank you, God. And I said, oh, God loves it when you thank him. She said, and then I heard a voice say, you're welcome. <laughs> and she said, I turned around to see who was there, and there was nobody. She said, do you think that was God? And I said, what do you think? And she said, well, she said, Somebody said, you're welcome. And there was nobody there, but I know I heard a voice. I believe it was God. And I said, yes, it was God. 
the, God, the living God, the one who created the earth, the, the one who created us, the living God, the one who died for us, let one of my students hear, audibly hear his voice. One little boy raised his hand and he said, now, Ms. Roach, I don't know if this is the Lord. I don't know. I'm not going to, oh, I'll tell you. I said, okay, just tell us what it is. He was at a ball game, one of his ball games, and it had started to rain. It was beginning to soak the ground. So they were sitting in the dugout and they were going to have to call the game because um, it was just too wet. He said, so I said, I prayed and I said, dear Jesus, please help it to stop raining. And he said, it stopped. He said, as soon as I said it, it stopped. And of course the kids were saying, you mean the raindrops just hung there? He said, no, it just stopped. He said, was that the Lord? Was that God? And I said, well, let me see. You said it was raining and it was rained out and you said a prayer and you asked Jesus to make it stop raining and it stopped. Did you get, did, um, you get to play the game? He said, the sun came out. We got to resume the game and everything was fine. He, they had a wonderful time. I said, yes, I, I would say that was Jesus. And he said, oh, and he goes, oh, but what he was asking was, was that a coincidence that that happened or was God answering his prayer? And I let him know. Remember when we were there, when we first started learning about the Lord and we would say a prayer, we would ask for something, it would happen, and we would say, what a coincidence. Or I wish I had an oatmeal cookie and somebody would walk up and give us an oatmeal cookie and we would say, was that a coincidence or was that God? You know, and this is where these children are. And one little girl raised her hand and she said, my mother told me uh, that, um, first of all, that um, a person, her mother's friend who has, has a friend who we've been praying for for about six weeks. And she was very ill and um, it was getting worse every week. And she said, today, my mom told me that her friend's friend is getting better every day. So just in that one class, in that one class, the Holy Spirit taught my class, my students, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still speaking to his people. He is still working miracles and showing signs and wonders. And he's still, still healing the sick. And he's, today, he wants to speak to you. He wants to speak, to, he's already begun speaking to our hearts. He wants you to know that he knows you and what you've asked for and what you need. He, um, he wants you to experience his resurrection power and he wants you to experience his healing love. So open yourself up, open your, like we were saying, open the eyes of your heart Give God permission to speak to you to, um, and to um, heal you and, to, um, and just to let you know how much he loves you. This is how I, what I see is the answer as we go forward in the church with the children is our own uh, testimony. Um, in Revelation, it says they defeated him, the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I believe we have to teach our children how to give their testimony, what God has done for them. Because they're gonna be facing trials later on as they grow. They're facing more trials today than we did when we were that, their age. Well, when we got back from Christmas, again, I opened up, after saying our prayers, I opened up the class to tell me how, what they, how they had experienced the Lord over um, Christmas. And one little boy told us 
that they, his whole family had gone north. He didn't know what state, but they had gone north to, um, to celebrate with his fa their family. And he said, I wanted to see snow. He says, but when we got there, they told us that it, it snows, but it probably wouldn't snow. It wasn't predicted and there wouldn't be any snow while they were there. He said, but then I remembered. I want everybody to say that. But then I remembered. Oh no, that's not good. But then I remembered. That's gonna be so important. That's, that, that little phrase is so important. And he said, I remember this story you told us about your son praying for snow, and it snowed. So he said, I prayed for snow, and it snowed. <laughs> and he said, it didn't snow real deep. He said, but it snowed enough to have a great snowball fight. <laughs> the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is teaching these children the power of God. The love of God. And Jesus said, they, you know, in, as time goes on, they may forget these little stories or they may go deep inside of them. But that's why Jesus said in the book of John, he says, the Holy Spirit, whom the uh, Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. And that's what I... I want to come back to uh, David and Goliath. The one thing that ties in here with this story today is that when uh, King Saul told David that he was too young, he wasn't experienced, he wasn't trained for battle, he remembered. He remembered that when he was um, keeping his father's sheep, that when the lion and the bear came to carry off one of his sheep, he ran after them. And he said, if they attacked me, I would grab them by the jaw, I would um, hit them, and I, I would strike them, and I would kill them. Now that's pretty strong for a youth to say, a youth to do. And I feel like that in the spirit, God is training these children to come against the enemy. When they hear lies, when they hear something that is not of God, they will be able to discern it and they will be able to have the grace, they will have the strength and the truth to stand up to the truth that, uh, that is in the scriptures, the truth that our church teaches. So the other one thing that I wanted to share today, excuse me, and I had to choose one story. I had to choose one thing of King David. He was my, he's still my favorite Old, uh, Old Testament person. And when I was first coming to the Lord, I could just read and he had such a special relationship with God. And he was known as, in the, in the New Testament, God said, he was a man after my own heart. And I loved the way he prayed. And I loved the way he was so honest with God. And I told God, I wanted that kind of relationship. I wanted the relationship like David had with him. And um, I didn't know how to get it. So I decided to start praying all the prayers that King David prayed as my own. Do you ever, you know how when sometimes you're reading scripture and you, and you read something, you, the Apostle Paul says it or somebody, it's just there and you say, oh, that's what I want. And you start to pray and you pray it for yourself. Well, there's a lot of things. As we heard, King David was totally committed to the Lord, totally surrendered. He loved the Lord with all his heart. He said, one thing I ask, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And I, would, I prayed that right from the beginning. And I will tell you, God has answered that prayer. I have dwelt with him for the last 49 years, every day of my life, dwelt in his presence. But the one prayer that David prayed, 
that I didn't understand it, but I decided to pray it. He said, Lord, he said, um, cleanse me of my unknown faults. And I thought, I don't have any faults. <laughs> but I'm going to pray it anyway. And I said, Lord, cleanse me of my unknown faults. And I let it go. Well, one um, summer day, I was um, running my three children around. And uh, they, were, I, they were 10 and under, I believe, at that time, or maybe 10, you know, around that age, uh, middle school age. And I had to run them here and run them there. And, you know, they, weren't, they didn't really talk to me in the car, and they never said thank you. I, I just thought, Lord, why are kids so, why are children such um, ungrateful brats, you know? <laughs> and I, I was thinking it, but that's the, I was, I was feeling the loneliness or the burden of being a single parent and doing everything myself. Nobody ever said thank you to me. You know, that, that's the kind of mood I was in. And, um, and all they ever wanted to know was, what's for dinner? That's the only time they talked to me was, what's for dinner? And I just was sitting there thinking about that. And all of a sudden, I remembered. I remembered something. And I thought back to when I was young, when I was their age, when I was in high school. My dad was the chauffeur. We only had one car. We had a very large family. And whenever, whatever I need, wherever I needed to be, my dad would take me there. And I said, Lord, I don't ever remember saying thank you. In my, in my mind's eye, I pictured myself getting out of the car. And I never said thank you. And I would sit in the back seat so I wouldn't have to talk to him. I would just be silent, and unless he asked me a specific question. And so I started thinking about it, and I said, Lord, I'm going to write my dad a letter. So that night, when the kids were in bed, I got out a pen and, um, pen, and I wrote to my, I started writing a letter to my dad. And I said, Dad, it came to my attention today that I just want to thank you for all for, that you were always there for me and that you were always there to take me wherever I needed to be and you took my friends. And I said, and I never said thank you. And I said, I'm so sorry. And I said, I want to ask your forgiveness for that. And I named a couple of other things he had done for me, and I thanked him for that. And I just began, I did, it was just a letter of thank you. And I was about to sign off when I remembered something. When I was 16 years old, I did something I shouldn't have done. Had, did you, have you ever done something? Did you ever do something <laughs> when you were 16? And when I got home, I knew I was going to be in my... I was going to be in trouble. I had never been in trouble before. And I just assumed my parents were going to yell at me. They were waiting for me at the door. And they just said, I, they just saw that I was okay. And they said, well, we'll talk about this in the morning. They never mentioned it again. And neither did I. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if your parents aren't going to mention it, why should, why should I remind them? So, uh, I forgot about it or so I thought. But you know, the things we never deal with, they don't just go away, they get buried down inside of us. And now I remembered it. And I am in my 30s at this time. And this happened when I was 16. And I said, Dad, remember that thing I did? And I named it. Remember when I did this? I wasn't trying to hurt my parents. I just wanted my own way. Did you ever want your own way when you were a teenager? <laughs> so I, I named it and I said, I said, I'm, I'm so sorry and I need to hear you say that you, that you forgive me. And so I folded up the letter, I mailed it off the next day, and as soon as I mailed it, I regretted it. 
I said, oh my gosh, what have I done? You, have you ever sent an email or a letter or written something to somebody and said, oh, I wish I had never done that. Why did I do that? I've opened up a can of worms. Your dad is gonna be upset with you now. Everybody's gonna be mad at you. I don't know why I thought those things, but what I realized is, what I realized later is, that's what I projected that I deserved. So I sent it off, and um, as it went off, I, I started thinking, and I remembered something. And I said, Lord, I said, Father, um, I've never thanked you for anything either. I've never said thank you. I never thanked you that you sent Jesus. I never thanked you for my family. I never thanked you. And I started thanking the Lord for everything. And it took hours. I went down the line and just thanked him. And just my whole heart opened up to gratitude. And I thanked the Lord for the first time that I was petite. I thanked the Lord that I was the first girl on both, my, on both parents' side, the first granddaughter on both parents' side. I thanked him, um, I thanked him for, that I was an American. I thanked him that I, was a wo that I was a woman. I thanked him and thanked him and thanked him for everything I could think of. And, um, and I said, Father, I said, I want to ask your forgiveness for my ingratitude and for all my sins. And I said, I'm so sorry for everything, for my sins. I'm truly sorry. And I want the slate clean between us. So I said, whatever you have to say to me, I said, would you say, to, say it to me through my father? And let's, my thought was, let's just get this out in the open get it said, and begin again. You know, just have a clean slate. I felt so good. So, um, but I was worried about what my father was gonna say to me about that, what I did when I was 16. So that was the time, you know, when you had to mail a letter, it took three days, and then it came three back, back three days. And I, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. So I fasted, because I was, it was making me so, what, what, what's he going to say? What am I going to have to do? And um, what, what judgment is going to come upon me? So after three days fasting, the letter came. And at first, I couldn't open it. I had to pray. I, had to, I waited a couple hours. Yeah, you see that in the movies where the people get a letter and they read it, and they read who it's from, and they look at it. They don't, they, they don't open it. And you say, open it already, you know, read it. So finally I opened it, and it was just a short note. And it said, dear, it said, dear Bug, because he call, always called me Bug. He said, um, as for the things that you wrote me about, he said, that was just all part of growing up. He said, um, and as for what you did when you were 16, he said, um, on my end, there's nothing to forgive. He says, but if you need to hear me say it, then I will say it. You are forgiven. And at that moment, I started crying. And the love and the mercy of God just poured over me. And I was free of the guilt and the shame and uh, my lack of, ingra of not being grateful for everything God had given me, I was free in just, that, in just that short note. And I was thanking God. And a whole new re relationship with my dad opened up. Now, it had not affected him, but it had blocked me from receiving all his love, you know, all that he had to give me. And it was, I began to enjoy my dad more and enjoy God the Father more. Well, life just continued on. And I found myself in RCIA for many years. In one year, the a director asked me to give the, uh, 
the retreat talk on forgiveness. And um, I thought about it, and I said, okay. And um, so I wrote my dad another letter. And I said, Dad, I'm going to have to um, give a retreat talk on forgiveness uh, for our CIA. And I said, I would like to use that, um, I'm going to use that letter, those letters that you, um, uh, that you and I uh, exchanged, that I wrote to you and you wrote to me. I said, but um, I want to ask you, I said, if anybody ever ask you what I did when I was 16, I want you to promise that you will never tell them. Because I knew I was going to publish the story, and I didn't want anybody to know. People always ask you, well, what was it? But it's nobody's business. So, um, and I knew my brothers and sisters. They would ask my dad. And so uh, I didn't want them to know. And so um, I didn't hear from him. And time went by, time went by. And finally, I called him on the telephone. And I said, Dad, I said, um, I just said, Dad. I didn't even, you know, I don't even say anything. I just start talking to them. And I said, Dad, did you get my letter? And he said, yes. He said, I have it right here. And I have paper and pen to answer you back. He said, um, but I can't remember what you did when you were 16. <laughs> he said, what was it? And I said, Dad, if you can't remember what I did when I was 16, I'm certainly not going to tell you. <laughs> he said, was it this? And I said, no, that was Mary Catherine. He said, was it this? And I said, no, that was Barbara. And he started guessing. I said, Dad, I don't know who it was. I said, all I want you to tell me, all I want you to promise me, if you ever remember what I did, <laughs> that you will never tell anyone. And he said, oh. I said, Dad, he was teasing me. I said, I'm not hanging up until you promise me. And he said, oh, OK. He said, I promise. And there was this little pause between us. And he said, well, he said, to forgive is human. To forget, divine. He says, does this make me divine? <laughs> and I said, Dad, if you can't remember what I did when I was 16, it makes you old. <laughs> it makes you very, very old. And he laughed the same way you just did. But it was at that point that I really understood in Isaiah when the Lord says, it's I who blot out your transgressions for my sake. He said, and, and I remember your sins no more. And if my dad, forget, if he couldn't remember our sins, I mean, what father wants to remember, what parent wants to remember the bad things about their children? No parent wants that, and neither does God. And the Lord is telling me that today, here, He wants you to know that you are forgiven from everything in your past, from those things you can't seem to forgive yourself for, the things that He can't even remember and will never even talk to you about. But you are forgiven through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. You are forgiven. And what I like about King David is that he knew right where to go. He went straight to the Lord. He says, against you and you alone have I sinned. And um, that's one of the things I love about the Catholic Church. When we sin, we know where to go. We have the sacrament of reconciliation. Look at all the people in the world who are walking around. They're heavy, they're irritated, they're upset. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They're burdened with their own sin, their own transgressions. Everybody's mad at everybody else. Everybody's accusing everybody else. And um, the Lord wants us to know we are forgiven. And today, 
he wants to set things right between us. And as I, I just have to tell you, the Lord gives me words and he's telling me it's so, either somebody watching or somebody here. You just got out of prison and you're just thinking God can't use you. And God wants you to know that this day you are forgiven. You are free. And he, today begins your new life with God. And he says, I have a plan for you, and I'm going to use you mightily in my kingdom. You are forgiven. So um, I, the, I, I would like for all of you, all of you to stand. And I want you to, I want you to pray after me. Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I commit myself wholly to you. I surrender totally to you. I will go where you tell me to go. I will say what you want me to say. I will do what you want me to do. And I will be who you want me to be. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Set me on fire for your kingdom. And use me for your glory. Cleanse me of my unknown faults. Heal my family. In Jesus, name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.